see, uh, it means a lot. It means, uh, I mean, see, the public uh, viewpoint regarding our, I mean, see, important matters that relate to us, that concern us, being articulated in a forum at the national level. So, without this representation, see, this, this would not have been possible. And then, this means that whatever challenges I have been able to project during my election campaign, because I try to acquaint people with the challenges that are ahead, and why the, to give the reasons that why should they should elect me. Uh, it means that those challenges now, dealing with those challenges, trying to meet those challenges. So that will be that will be it will be a kind of an opportunity to meet the challenges, to articulate the I mean public sentiment. Uh, that that is the object that immediately uh, I, I, uh, uh, is expected to be achieved. See, it was myth, myth because you know the public opinion was manipulated. See, they they earlier mobilized public opinion in their favor. I mean, when I say they, I mean PDP, on false promises. For example, they say that it is a political narrative. We want to keep that at bay. We don't want that narrative to enter Kashmir or a political force enter Kashmir. That is the impression that was given to the people of South Kashmir. Once that was, I mean, see, they, when they, after they, see, won the mandate in uh, 2014 elections, they went diagonally opposed to what they had projected before people. So it was obvious that was fake support and that fell apart. Now it was the worst place for PDP because people there were well aware that what was promised to them and how their trust had been betrayed. So it, it, was, it was something that was expected. That is why when uh, Mahbubha ji decided to uh, contest election, uh, so I said that she has made my job easier because I now will be able to tell people that here is a person who has done all this to which the people are witness. Uh, for example, 10 years back, she would have presided over a government. And then it would have been a tough time for me to tell people, look here what she has done. But here it was see immediate past. It was just few months back when she presided over a government of death and destruction. See, South Kashmir was worst affected because the worst reaction was from South Kashmir to her decision to join hands with RS. Obviously, because they were the people who were let down. They were the people who were betrayed. So, I mean, I, mean, uh, I think uh, it... It, it was inappropriate for them to expect that they will win from South Kashmir. While my job was easier. I could, I could hammer down, I could hammer my, my viewpoint. And people were receptive. I had ready illustrations, ready examples. 2,000 kids partially or fully lost their eyesight. They were there roaming around in every village. See, 91,000 houses attacked during nocturnal searches. These, these houses are located there only in Bejbada, in Kolagam, in Shupaya or elsewhere. So that is why uh, it, was, it was not that tough, though it looked tough. But only what, what was required was that there should be someone who does not have baggage on his back. I did not have any baggage. I had worked somehow in public life. After, I mean, after uh, laying down my robes, I see, uh, kept writing about Kashmir issues. Kashmir identity, Kashmir autonomy, Kashmir integrity, the issues, the excesses, and uh, the setup was taken by the previous government to demolish autonomy, see GST, NEET, Surfacy, Food Safety Act, what not. So people believed in me. They lent their ear to me. That is how I was able to secret the success. This death and destruction that we witnessed today, to me it is a fallout of misrule of four and a half years. And she emboldened, Madam emboldened the Kashmir, uh, the forces inimical to Kashmir. She emboldened them to do, be more harsh. It was because of her, when she used the phrase, uh, you know, uh, the off-quoted phrase of, you know, uh, toffee and milk. This was not simply a sentence said inadvertently. It was a statement, it was, it was a policy statement. She meant to say that you are the attackers, you are the uh, assailants. You are the people who violate law and you, whatever you get is justified and even you deserve more than that. It was a statement, political statement. She branded entire generation of our young men as in a way 
uh, see terrorists or who are attackers. So that way, this whatever you see today, it is fallout of that. It is an immediate consequence of that. Who emboldened? Who 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 just who uh, decided on Operation All Out? It was her, as chief of this. Uh, I mean, you see the security grid here. See uh, now, there is no let up. See, we are pained. Still, I mean, see, press is not in a position to articulate the atrocities that are heaped on people on ground. I will give you a simple illustration. See, jurisdiction of court is taken away, all courts are taken away. We have in city only one NIA court. Whoever is booked from far flung areas under NIA, he has to go to all the way, his parents have to go to all the way to Jammu for a simple application, for a simple relief, for a medical checkup, for bail, for interim bail. See what kind of atrocities are there. See, so after this election, my and I, uh, uh, other more senior leaders who have been elected, our first and foremost focus will be on minimizing this, getting down the scale of atrocities, excesses heaped on people, done to people. I mean, see, people get, people deserve some kind of relief. Now, see this high, highway ban. What was this? Highway ban was not, I, I am of the view that it was not something that was to facilitate smooth transport of security forces, movement of security force. Because army said that we never asked it. So it was done as a message to people of Kashmir. That look here, what this is what we can do, and we can do much more than that. Who took that decision? So our, our then only against highway ban, you know, we were on roads. I myself, as I was on campaign that time, our senior leaders, senior most leaders, Dr. 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 Saab, Dr. Farooq Abdullah, I mean, he was on, sitting on the roadside. This is what we want to continue. We want to see, raise our voice against atrocities, try to use all the means available, the legal means available, other means available, to minimize it, bring down the scale of atrocities. Unfortunately, uh, our people have gone through this for the last 70 years. See, it is not. It is not. Yesterday they started. It may have changed, you know, colors. Mm -hmm. It may have changed color. It may have changed, you know, uh, the manifestations may have been uh, different. But the fact remains is that people have gone through this for the last seven decades. That is why uh, people. I mean, it is otherwise known that public memory is uh, very short-lived. So that is why it takes a while for people to get reconciled or just uh, forget about. You know, the worst part has been that in earlier we had, see, 2010. We had 2010, uh, we had earlier when, uh, I mean, things were not, I mean, uh, it was not good. Uh, there were uh, excesses, uh, we had disturbances, we had city demonstrations. But, you know, all the time there used to be some kind of, you know, some kind of, uh, the person who was heading the government, he used to give an expression that he is sorry about it. But here was an error, where there was arrogance coupled with atrocities. It is not that only somebody who, who presided over the government, uh, atrocities were heaped or atrocities were done to people, excess were done, you know, in d taking different shapes. But here was a ruler who was arrogant as well, that look here, you deserve more. But earlier, it, it, it used to be a, a different. I mean, he would give a message. The, I mean, the look he wore on his, it was that, no, I'm sorry about it. It is true, I own it. See, as, as Umar Abdullah said last, that even if one, one is a police, my, from a person, police person from a police, from police force fires, a, opens fire, it is as if I am doing it. We didn't see that in the last five years. So that emboldened. Now you know they have now they are conceiving more plans. I mean, coming up new ideas. Just highway ban. It was never it was never seen in history of Kashmir. So they come because it has, they have been emboldened by madam. See, first is that uh, most people have don't have good idea about 370. They say that 370 is a, now a shell. 370 is empty. 370 is never empty, never shell. <laughs> See, 370 is like a wall. This wall blocks all laws, central laws. 
cannot, central laws cannot apply to Jammu and Kashmir, constitutional provisions cannot apply to Jammu and Kashmir unless a provision is made applicable following the mechanism given in 370. Through 370 has a small door, a wall with a small door. This door is opened by our executive, by our political by government, state government. See, they open the door. See, the wall is there. It is, I mean, it is a misnomer to say that it is shell and it is now empty. No, it cannot be shell. It is wall. It is all the time there. In 1977, when there was 42nd Amendment, the Chief Minister, uh, late Sheikh Mahmoudullah, had will to block it. He said he didn't open the door. 42nd Amendment doesn't apply to us. So it is, uh, see, in 1953, you know, there was, there was, uh, there was, there was uh, kind of an operation that had impact on our political, you know, uh, the uh, uh, polity and political system in state. What happened that a popular uh, democratically elected chief prime minister was arrested. Thereafter, we see, now if we see that in the background of what happened later. We see that 53 was an event, willful to done willfully, intentionally, so as to pave way for erosion of this autonomy. After 53, you see 54, 1954 presidential order, that is an omnibus order. It applies almost everything in the constitution to the Jammu and Kashmir. And thereafter, we have seen amendments to this 1954 order applying more and more. So all the governments, you know, from 1954 down up to 75, have allowed this autonomy to be eroded. Consistent. We had a permit system here. That was done away with. Income tax did not apply to us. That was done away with. You know, uh, we had a president. We had a prime minister. That was done away with by our government in 1966. And then a lot of money. Then of late, from 75 to 2014, we see a slowdown in this erosion. We see a slowdown, we see the government, I mean, see the political uh, uh, state government being more responsive to the concerns of people about internal out autonomy and all that. But after 2014, we see a massive assault on our autonomy. That is GST, we lost our fiscal autonomy. So all these successive governments, except we have, we have kind, of, kind of patch in our history, 75 onwards to, to when we have it slows down. But 2014, we have again see, we have again witnessed a new, you know, with a, with a, with a new vigor, with a new with this force. Now, this is kind of, uh, we make successful assaults come on autonomy. More laws are made applicable. See, GST, fiscal autonomy is one of the important dimensions of our political autonomy. Both are intertwined. We cannot have sovereignty, political sovereignty without economic financial sovereignty, fiscal sovereignty. And in 2014, after 2014, 2003, by application of GST, we surrendered it. It was, it was, it, it belonged to us. Our tax policy was our concern. Should we tax us, us and what should be the rate of the tax or should we not tax or should we give a tax holiday or should we exempt from tax? That is all within our powers. But we have surrendered that power under previous government, PDP, BGP government. Same way, if you see, these are successive governments who have been collaborators in assault on our autonomy, in erosion of our autonomy, erosion of our special status. These are all the governments, except the 75 to 2014 patch. See, 370 is a permanent feature of Constitution of India. It cannot be abrogated, modified, or changed. That is the law laid down, and that is the position, constitutional position. But what happens? I mean, see, uh, the central government, without respecting the legal procedure, take a route that is not legal, strictly legal. See, in case of 73rd and 103 amendment, earlier we were, in, uh, we were introducing 249 article. They did not follow that route. Now, I will, I will briefly tell you what is the route. See, route is that if any provision is proposed to be applied, that is not applicable till date. What happens? It, uh, the state government is asked to give its consent. Whether state government does give consent to the application and consent and concurrence. Now, consent is to be given where uh, the provision to be applied or the law to be applied relates to the subjects on which we have made accession. Uh, Maharaja has made accession. 
that is defense, foreign affairs and communications. If there is a law or a provision that relates to these three areas, only consent is required. Because you know why? Because they say that no, since the war, Maharaja had already made accession on these subjects, so we should take it that people have already given their concurrence. It is no only consent. But when it relates to something outside these three subjects, concurrence is required. Concurrence means the state government can say no, sorry. Even consent they can also withhold consent. But here they have more, it, the power of state government is, I mean, stronger. They can say, no, sorry, we cannot do, we don't want. As Sheikh Mullah said in case of 47 amendment. So that is why now, when we say that political, why, why should this concurrence be, why should you insist on this concurrence? See, concurrence means if we allow any provision, constitutional provision to apply to Jammu and Kashmir, that is not applicable till date, that means we surrender up segment of our sovereignty. It again comes under an eclipse. That part, the part dealt with by this provision that is proposed to be introduced, made applicable. So, this power belongs to people. Only people can say, yes, we surrender this part of our, this segment of our sovereignty. Okay? So, this power is to be, this concurrence is to be given by the people. And people obviously cannot give it. There is either way, either referendum, they say, but there cannot be referendum day in and day out. Now, when we say people have this right, we say they are duly elected government. Because they, the, they have elected the government, is an elected government, we can assume that. In political science, we can assume that, no, whatever they say, this, they have with it consent of the people. It is only this right belongs, this power belongs only to the politically, uh, this uh, political or uh, elected government. Now, what happens? President now asks governor to give his concurrence. How can governor give concurrence? Governor does not represent people of Kashmir. And this is a decision that relates to surrender of a segment of our sovereignty. How can governor do it? He does not represent us. He is an agent of the president. Second is that president cannot ask his own agent to give concurrence. He is under his control. See, we assume that when we say that somebody has a right to give concurrence or consent, that means that somebody has an independent uh, capacity to make an independent decision, say yes, say no, say no, sorry, or subject to these conditions. But when we, we have an agent of the president, how can he say that? He doesn't have power, he doesn't have our mandate, he doesn't have our consent, we have not reposed faith in him. See. This is why we say that this cannot be done. And when 73rd Amendment and 103rd Amendment was introduced recently, it was without a constitutional mandate. Unconstitutional. They did not follow the constitutional route. It is kind of you, you, you just as, as, as someone barges into, into, a, into a home uh, where he is, not, he is uninvited. Now 35A. This is about 30, 370. 370 is a permit feature. It itself says that this cannot be amended, this cannot be modified, this cannot be abrogated. And then, even the, we have a provision in the constitution that allows that permits amendment. Even that is not applicable in this case. So, now 35A. 35A, you know, uh, there was in 1952, there was an agreement between government, between people of India and people of human Kashmir through their elected representatives. We call it Delhi Agreement. This Delhi Agreement was not a private part of uh, kind of a private arrangement between Prime Minister Nehru and uh, Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Abdullah. It was, it was an agreement that was entered into after thorough negotiations between representatives of the government of India and representatives of the government of Jammu and Kashmir. See, they entered into this agreement and this agreement was thereafter placed before Parliament and Constituent Assembly of the state. It was not fully, people don't understand, I mean, somehow we have not been able to focus on this part of it. See, this was placed before two parliaments. Parliament of India and legislature of Constitutional Assembly. And introduced by two prime ministers. They had a tough time persuading their members to agree to ratify it, approve it. And then after thorough discussion, it was approved by two legislatures. And what was one of the provisions of this Delhi Agreement? That we will have 
exclusive power to decide about, about our state subject laws. That our, and after that agreement, as an obligation coming out of that agreement, we made amendment in 1939 constitution because we were, for, we were, we were just, I mean, uh, governed by 1939 constitution. We made amendments. There was no Sadri Yasa till ta that time. We had Maharaja. There was Yuvraj, we had Maharaja in council. That is, Maharaja was the ruler and he was assisted by a council of ministers. We made change in that. We introduced Sadri Asat in 1939 constitution. Then parliament made change in this constitution. They introduced 35A. So 35A is a consequence of, 35A is a consequence of a Delhi agreement. It flows out of Delhi agreement. So that Delhi agreement was some kind of a, a treaty. You know, it is not, and now, now what is the argument under 35A is that president had no power to introduce it. But it was already, and parliament was kept away. But parliament, parliament endorsed and parliament adopted the Delhi agreement. The Delhi agreement has one of its components, in, important components was our right to have state subject law. Fair? So when we made changes in our constitution, they made changes in the constitution. That means it went into legislative that filtration. 35A went through legislative. It was in a way, it was in a way, uh, you know, allowed by the parliament, parliament of India. So how can you say that nobody did it came it bypassed parliament? When parliament approved Delhi agreement, so that means parliament approved every segment of Delhi agreement. One of the segments was that the state of Jammu and Kashmir shall have state subject law and shall have right to modify change or whatever. And that will not be open to challenge on any, any, any count. The policies remain same. BJP is more open. It, is, uh, it tells us about what is its agenda. He doesn't make any secrets about it. They say that we are against 370, we are against identity, we, are against, we want for the integration total, and we are against uh, even, I mean, all what is closed our heart. But BJP says it. They have it in manifesto. Congress does it without having it in manifesto. That is what is our experience. See, who, who arrested our elected Prime Minister, Sheikh Mahmoud in 1953, on a, on a, on a ground, that is, that is, I mean, see, that is nowhere known in the, see, democratic world, that is, you have a last conference of your cabinet, that is never a reason to dismiss a government. It is, you have lost confidence of the house, not cabinet. Second is, he was not given an opportunity to just prove his majority in the house, but that apart, who did that? And that paved way of, of that opened that paved way for erosion of our autonomy. And who 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 just uh, I mean see changed president Sadri Asad and Prime Minister. And then series of steps that have been taken by Congress, but being free from outside saying that no, we are we are not we are not uh, for what they actually do. That is the only difference. But same is both have from day one. See, BJP was around in 1953, not around thereafter for, for a long, long time, when our autonomy was demolished brick by brick by Congress or by its local collaborators. No way. How can we be? We are interested in, I, my person, in the integrity of the state. See, this state, some people have an idea that it started with uh, in 1847 or when, when it was by uh, Amritsar sale lead and all that. No, we have our historical roots. We have been together all the time. See, it is not, it is not that Jammu, Kashmir and uh, Ladakh, as some people, they, they, they say that, what they believe, or uh, they propagate that it was kind of an artificial unity uh, it came out, uh, it, it, it came into being in 1846 after this by uh, and all that. No. We have historically, we have been together. See, Renchan from Ladakh ruled over us. Kota Rani from, uh, you know, uh, from Jammu ruled over us. Were not that Kotas, were not they, I mean, see, what does that as dynasty that ruled over Kashmir? That was from Jammu. Renchan was from Ladakh. We were together all the time. And Badshah, Zainal Abdin, 
both his wives were from Jammu, sisters of Maharaja of Jammu, and one of his sons died while fighting for his maternal uncle in Jammu. It is not something new. People don't know. I mean, people and our younger generation is not made acquainted with these historical facts. We have been Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh. It is not an artificial entity. We have been together for centuries together in history. See, all the shepherds, all, all livestock would come from Jammu to Tosmadan and other places of Kashmir. Our economy was intertwined. Our politics was intertwined. We have been together in history. So, we cannot be in favor of trifurcation. Yes, we say that no region should take advantage of another region. Every region should get fair share in resources. That is fair enough. Kashmir should get, Jammu should get, Ladakh should get. And we should empower all the three regions. But we have been together. Maybe that may be some kind of an autonomy. But against trifurcation, that is, that is, you cannot demolish our integrity. We are one, we are three, three regions, but that is true about many, many states in uh, India and elsewhere. We have some within state, we have some regions. They have different geography, their topography, and their resources, and their uh, lifestyle may be different, but that doesn't mean that they, uh, they have to fall apart. Is it possible under constitution? No, nothing is possible unless we have an elected government here. See, nothing is possible what, what, what we have uh, seen, even no change in constitution, because I said that Jammu and Kashmir is a, see, it has its own peculiar, you know, uh, we have features. We are not like any other state. All states have three lists, concurrent list, union list, and state list. In our state, we have only two lists, concurrent and uh, union list. See, in case of Jammu and Kashmir, whatever we give to the center, have given to the center, that only belongs to the center. The rest belongs to us. In case of other states, whatever center has given them belongs to them. The rest all to the center. People don't appreciate it. See, now they, what they want, they want to do everything in an unconscious way. That cannot be permitted. That cannot be done. I am hoping against hope that Modi having won this massive mandate, maybe it occurs to him that see where, where history has placed him. He can use this mandate for bringing in an era of peace in South Asia. I mean that can be and let us hope and pray for that. He can use this mandate to be kind of you know, uh, to be autocratic or to be you know, you don't respect law, respect constitution, uh, even in, in violation of constitution do things that may be uh, see, as regards Kashmir, I see. But at the same time, let us hope he has an opportunity. He can, he can script history for himself, a place in history of world in himself. Maybe somebody who, is, uh, who deserves to earn the biggest, see, whatever, whatever award we have in the world, if he brings peace to South Asia. He resolves Kashmir dispute by going for trilateral, tri tripartite talks, enter into a dialogue, see, with people of Kashmir, with the government of Pakistan and end this. Now see, what is, it is not economically wise for India, Indian polity, to have this pot boiling. Now see ma'am, 30 billion, 30 to 50 billion are spent per year to protect Saichin, a strip of land without a leaf, without a life, and more than 10 billion on controlling street demonstrations, 10, 10 billion than on other, 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 uh, see other, whatever, whatever inter interventions, and see the people of, see the countrymen, people of India. We have a patient in UP who, in a, in a, in a, in an ex vehicular accident, has his leg severed, and he uses that leg as pillow because there is no pillow in the hospital. We see a girl standing in a hospital queue, losing her, collapsing because she doesn't get health care. We see a girl committing suicide because she has no printing charge. And her teacher taunts her that you have not seen an exam. We have girls who commit suicide because they believe that their parents may not be able to marry them. We have horrible suicides. Scores and scores. See, things are not that okay in India. So this money that is spent here on management of this issue, temporary management, see, this can be, we can have better, you know, better, better areas where we can spend it. It is total misallocation of resources, scarce resources, precious resources.
Why should we be spending 10 billion? See on Saichan, if there is peace, this 10 billion can have 10, 10, 10 mega irrigation projects in India. So I believe that though we are apprehensive, that uh, things may be done that are not permitted by constitution. But I believe, I hope that this mandate, Narendra Modi ji realizes that history has given him a chance, an opportunity that was given to no one else to resolve this dispute, bring relief to people of Kashmir, people of India, people of Pakistan, whole South Asia. Why to be, why, why to be, why to be in this, you know, in su su such a such a hostile atmosphere? So that is what I believe, what I hope, but apprehensive at the same time. I will say, <laughs> I will say, see, people become, uh, uh, people become very apprehensive about Amir Shah. Yeah, they say that because he has been very articulate about his viewpoint. We will do it. We will smash this. We will do this. We will let us have now. Of late, he has said settlements. But every government has to understand that they can. It cannot live. See in conflict with in in constant war with. 10 million people, I mean more than 10 million, 12.5 million people. It cannot, it cannot by using force, by using, you know, arm twisting. Uh, it, it, that cannot, be. it will, it will widen. We again hope it will widen the gulf. It will widen the gulf and it is not easy. It's not a small pocket where you can just go for this core issue and, you know, uh, I mean, use of excessive force, you cannot do it. Uh, my, my hope, I guess, my hope about Amit Shah is same as about Mr. Modi. Maybe Amit Shah now as home minister, home minister of, see, it is 125, see, 1.25 billion people, 29 states, you know, union territories. He should, I think, that this will uh, definitely make a change in his psyche and he will bid goodbye to whatever he used to think about it, whatever his policies, and start a new era, a new era of peace, reconciliation. You know, reach out, an era of reach out, reconciliation, peace, prosperity. That is what I hope. Uh, see, when NC was with BJP, it was not, NC was not, it was, it was just more than 20 parties together. It was not this BJP, BJP of, you know, um, Modi ji and Amit Shah ji. This was a, a Vajpayee and who is respected everywhere as he was kind of, so, so, and he was the Prime Minister. So that was not this BJP that NC was. NC had, was, was represented there by, you know, we had, we had some, some share in this central world. So, but PDP, at the time of PDP, it had already made that switch over. Vajpayee era was over. It was a new era. And they were not making any secrets about Kashmir. What is their agenda? So I don't see, I don't see any kind of, you know, any kind of, uh, except that they are at the central government and we have to, uh, if, uh, in, uh, see in days to come, there are assembly elections, there will be an NC government, that NC government has to deal with the central government headed by it. That relation to is true. I don't see any kind of alliance. I don't see any chance of any kind of alliance because, you know, we have two different two different manifestos, two different agendas, two different our viewpoints. We are for total autonomy. We are for resolution of Kashmir dispute through tri trilateral or tripartite dialogue. And we are for restoration of the autonomy, whatever we have lost during the last 70 years. And as you know, BJP ha doesn't have that kind of agenda. B BJP has agenda, no, there should be no autonomy at all. There should be total integration. And now, as you say, that trifurcation and the setup. So we are, we stand on two different routes. I don't see any chance. Of it.